So search GPT is out and in this video I want to go over what it is, how to get early access, how it may affect Google and how to do SEO or how SEO for search GPT will look like in the future. So if you don't know, uh, OpenAI released this about uh, 24 hours ago. It's called search GPT. It is a prototype at the moment. And basically what it does is a direct competitor to Google, right? You go here, you can just input your search query on it, hit search, and then as you can see here, this is what the UI will look like. It's a Google-like search engine, right? You can ask it anything, and like ChatGPT, where it is a chat, there's back and forth. Here, there's also some back and forth because you can ask follow-up questions, but it's basically, I mean, a direct competitor to Google where it, is, it gives you like a result search based of what it is that you're asking with, of course, linking out to some of the sources. Um, again, we're testing ChatGPT, a temporary prototype of new AI search features that give you fast and timely answers with clear and relevant sources. And this is exactly what users want, right? People complain about Google all the time where you search for something, right? You search for something and then the top uh, results, right? The top one, two, three, four, all above the fold is all ads. You have to scroll down to find actual um, organic results, right? And it's, it's a pain, right? Because what users want with search engines, right? Is access to information as fast as possible, right? And there we go. Here's the official announcement, right? Uh, it was announced uh, like a day ago, and a lot of people are commenting, uh, SEOs right now, licking their lips and uh, excited for what's to come because the reality is that, again, SEO isn't going away, right? This is yet another search engine, right? As long as we have search engines, right? As long as we have engines where people can search for stuff and it gives us results, regardless of how the results are displayed, right? SEOs, people that do search engine optimization will always have a job. And this is again, another um, interesting move in the timeline timeline of, of the AI space where search engines would still exist, right? Search engines would still exist in the AI space, but the SEO for it's gonna be a bit different. But again, a lot of mixed feelings, people are saying that Google is gonna um, be destroyed. Google's stock is down by a lot. Uh, I mean, the market overall is down. I'll show you right here real quick. Alphabet stock, and this like this is basically happens uh, because people let's just do this. People are just like they're too quick to making decisions, right? Same thing happened when ChatGPT came out, right? People were saying, "Oh, Google is going away," but yeah, Google is still here, and a lot of people still use it. But again, it went down. I think they lost a couple of billions in market cap. That being said, the market as a whole also fell, and. Um, don't be like alarmed with all these like people saying the world's gonna end because it, the extremes are never true, right? When ChatGPT came out, people thought the world's gonna change, Google's going away, it, it never went away, right? Companies adapt and the world adapts to what the, the consumer wants. And so Google isn't going away and SEO isn't going away. So um, I also wanna show you like how the UI will look like more. Again, this is sort of a prototype still. Um, but again, you can search for stuff and it will give you real time information based on relevant sources. And you can click the sources, right? for the uh, where the info was found on, right? And so you can also still do SEO for it, right? And I like the fact that um, it is, as I say, search in a more natural, intuitive way. So it's not the, the old Google search where you search for something, right? And there's like only blue links, right? And I think Google's gonna have to adapt, right? And Google has been adapting for, throughout the years, right? For example, this is an adaptation, right? They show you like, when you search, they show you the stock graph, they show you this stuff, right? Like years ago, this didn't happen. Two years ago, it was just a blue link. So Google is adapting, right? Uh, and Google is sort of trying to do, actually, ChatGPT or SearchGPT now is sort of making this, taking it to the next level. So a more intuitive, more natural way of searching, which is giving you a lot of information right off the bat, images, links in different ways, not just like a bunch of blue links, right? And so that's that. Now, how to get early access is quite simple. Just go to... Uh, openai.com and go to the search GPT tab and click just join waitlist, right? It's pretty simple, join waitlist. You have to be logged in with your um, your account, your uh, OpenAI account. I've already joined the waitlist. And so when I have full access, I'll make a video on it, on how it works and all that. And, um, and that's that. Now, how are we gonna be doing SEO for this? Again, we, SEO isn't going away. We're all still going to have to be producing content because these search engines, the information they displayed, right? The information that's on here, is based off of publishers, like publishers like me and you, sorry about that, publishers like me and you that feed the search engine, right? And it's the job of the search engine to then give back to the publishers by citing the sources, right? For example, how, how they do it here, right? They cite the sources. And if you want to learn more about it, if you want to discover the products that are recommended here, you go down then to the source because these new search engines will never have a full 
the, the full information out of the bat because it's too much information. So it'll always link out to the main source where, for example, if it's an e-commerce store, you can find more about the products they sell. If it's a, an agency, for example, you can read through and find the story of the agency, do some case studies, some stuff. So the information that the search engines display will not be enough to make a decision on buying something or not, right? In my opinion, you're always going to have to click to learn more from the actual source, right? Just like with um, when you're searching for products, for example, Nike shoes, right? And you, there's a bunch of all this here, right? You still click through all of them and see if the story is trustworthy, if it has reviews, right? You don't just click and buy right off the bat, right? So I think this sort of mindset will still apply to um, these search engines because again, this just shows you the shoes. It doesn't show you the reviews of the shoe. I mean, some of them do, but not all show you the reviews of the shoes, show you if the story is trustworthy or not. So it's only the top level information, right? And if you want to learn more, you just click on it. Okay, hopefully this is making sense. Now, how all of this might affect Google is simply if Google doesn't adapt, right? That being said, Google will, of course, adapt, right? These, these are billion dollar companies. Yeah, they know what they're doing, even though there's like this narrative on Twitter that Google is, 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 is doomed. They have no idea what they're doing. They have really smart people working on there and they do actually know what they're doing. And they have, that's why they're, they are, they're a multi-billion dollar company, right? So they will adapt based on what the customer wants. For example, ChatGPT is building this, right? They, they build search GPT, right? If, of course, there's mass adoption of this and the world sees that this is the new way people want to search for stuff, of course, Google will adapt and implement things accordingly, right? Uh, but as of now, Google it, it still works, right? And Google still constantly doing improvements on how um, they display information. But one thing I want to make clear is that we are seeing an evolution in search engines, right? But still, search engines are here. And again, as long as we have search engines, we're going to have the ability to optimize for these search engines, right? Um, in these ones, right, in, in AI-based search engines, uh, there's more emphasis, post, uh, emphasis po um, positioned on backlinks, right? Because they will recommend the stuff, right? They'll recommend certain results based on their authority, right? Based on how the AI engine feels, like why are they recommending these two sites, right? Why not other ones? Because maybe these two sites have... Um, a whole site that talks about, um, I don't know, this type of fish, a bunch of blog posts about fishing, right? They have relevant context in this niche. That's why they're recommended, right? And this relevancy is built through content, through content marketing, to backlink building. So you're always still going to have to produce content to show up on these AI search engines, right? It's not as if like written SEO content is going away. It is not, right? You're still always going to have to make your brand relevant for a certain topic. And relevancy comes with content, right, comes with showing off your expertise, whether that's through video, written form, and then you, of course, all, with all that, you build backlinks and you build your brand with that, right? And this type of content that's going to be showed, right? For example, when you type in Nike shoes, of course, the first, um, the first um, listings that show up that are not ads will be like the Nike official shop. And then, of course, other ones, right? Because again, this is the Nike brand. They've built authority in this space, right? Hopefully this is making sense. And so again, because of that, you're always going to have to build up your brand. And to build up your brand, you're going to have to build up the what, we, what people usually call topical authority. Oh, that's an A, sorry. Which is usually built with blog posts, right? Uh, brand building with YouTube videos, um, social media, right? All this is going to be building up your brand. And this ties in perfectly with <laughs> what I what our software does, which basically allows you to build out um, beautiful blog posts with in-article images, internal links linking out to your products, external links, even in-article videos that are relevant to what the content oh, what the content is about. It allows you to build also, also take Amazon product listings, right, and with a cup with just with a click, build out uh, Amazon product listing reviews, right? This has links to the Amazon products. Uh, also allows you to build up news, right? News articles with trustworthy information based on real life events, right? With the um, sources right here. Again, if you have a website that talks about uh, gardening, right? You sell gardening supplies. You might, have, might want to have, sorry, a, a news section where you just push out all the news in the, new, in the gardening space. New seeds, new species that were discovered, new ways to plant, right? All these news in, the, um, in your niche, basically, right? And having and publishing, for example, news articles to your site uh, and to your brand, We'll make sure these new search engines and this new AI space knows, okay, these guys have a lot of news on their site about uh, this topic. So yeah, surely they're producing content about this. They are making themselves relevant for uh, for this niche, right? Hopefully this is all making sense, but my point here is that you're still gonna, gonna have to produce valuable content to cement yourself as a brand in the space. Whether you choose to like have a, a news 
uh, news space on your site, whether you choose to have like a blog post with valuable information, like a blog, uh, blog with multiple blog posts, or whether you choose to review uh, uh, Amazon product listings, right? Uh, you're still going to have to be producing content. And for that, you can use Journalist AI. Just go to journalist.com, give it a go. My goal of this video is not to sell you on this. In fact, you can get it for free. Uh, um, but if you want to get it, just, yeah, that's, that's what it does. Uh, my goal is just to show you like, and uh, hype you on the future of search because it's going to be really cool. And um, the good thing about disruption, it's the last thing I'm going to say right here. The good thing about disruption is that it opens up a lot of opportunity because when things change, the first people to take action and adapt are they going to be the winners, right? And I know this is super cliche, but it's just reality, right? The people that adapt to this new wave age of search will win, okay? So yeah, that's basically the video. Again, I want to say one more time, you're still going to have to produce content because again, these search engines will take the info from what's already out there in, on the internet, right? The info they're going to be displaying based on your search queries is taken from blog posts you've written, news posts you've written, right? Amazon product listings uh, reviews you've written, all the stuff you produce it's going to cement you as an authority in a certain space. And then the AI will scour the internet to see, okay, who's the authority in this space for XYZ and will submit your results in the search engines itself. That's it. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.